Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto took Republic City by storm with the Avatar Korra. Part 1. Huge shout out to Engineer Forever for this story. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. Lieutenant. Said a nameless metalbending officer. Yeah? Asked a voice of a teenager. The teen was a handsome youth. Spiky shoulder-length sun-kissed blonde hair with jaw-length bangs framing his face, along with a pair of emerald green eyes and a lightly tanned skin. The young man was dressed in the standard metalbender uniform. The young lieutenant was in the middle of writing out some paperwork when he was interrupted. The culprit to the property damage incident has been brought in and is currently being interrogated by Chief Bifong. I see. Hum the teen, description. He asked. Female, water tribe, roughly around your age, I would say lieutenant. The officer said. Identity? The young lieutenant pressed. No idea sir. Rumors? The teen asked with a smile. The officer covered his mouth and leaned forward, some of the guys are saying she's the avatar, but that's just through the grapevine sir. The officer then returned to his standing position, awaiting further orders. The avatar huh? The chief is going to have a field day if it really is her. The teen muttered as he rubbed his eyes with his hand. I'll go in and see what's happening. Return to your duties officer. The teen said as he stood up and head to the interrogation rooms. But sir, your paperwork. The teen turned around, walked backwards and gave a shrug, it'll be here when I get back. He said with a smile. The teen walked down the hall and opened the interrogation door and saw both his chief officer and a pretty water tribe girl talking. Hein then, I want to talk to whoever is in charge. The water tribe girl said. You're talking to her lady avatar, this is Chief Bifong. The teen said. Both turned to see the boy. Lieutenant Naruto, what are you doing here during my interrogation? The chief asked in a hard tone. Wait, Bifrong? As in Lin Bifrong? Your Toph's daughter. The avatar exclaimed in happiness. What of it? Lin said in an uncaring way, and again, Lieutenant, what are you doing here? She asked Naruto. Naruto gave her a neutral expression, I had some paperwork that needed your signature chief. He said. Wait wait wait, back on topic. Why are you treating me like a criminal? Avatar Ong and your mother were friends. They saved the world together. The avatar girl stated. That's ancient history, and it's got diddle squat to do with the mess you're in right now. You can't just waltz in here and dole out vigilantly justice like you own the place. Lieutenant Naruto you knew I was in the middle of interrogating someone. The lieutenant shrugged, I admit that I knew, but I was curious to see the new avatar. We'll discuss this later lieutenant. The chief said with finality. Naruto nodded understood ma'am. The window opened, chief, councilman Tenzin is here. Said a nameless officer. Lin sighed, let him in. She said in a dull tone and rose from her seat. Naruto turned to see Tenzin walk in. Tenzin sorry I got a little sidetracked on my way to see you. The avatar said. Tenzin took a deep breath and turned to Lin and smiled, Lin, you are looking radiant as usual in Naruto, excellent to you see my boy. Naruto nodded and gave a small smile, Tenzin, always a pleasure. Cut the garbage Tenzin, why is the avatar in Republic City? I thought you were supposed to be moving down to the South Pole to train her. Lin asked aggressively. My relocation has been delayed. The avatar on the other hand will be heading back to the South Pole immediately, where she will stay put. He responded. But. The avatar tried to argue but was cut off by Tenzin. If you would be so kind as to drop the charges against Korra, I will take full responsibility for today's regrettable events and cover all the damages. He said. Lin looked at Korra and then back to Tenzin, she sighed and released Korra's cuffs through metalbending, fine, but get her out of my city. Always a pleasure Lin, Naruto. Let's go Korra. I'll escort you out Councilman Tenzin. Naruto said. Lin said nothing about it and gave Korra the I'm watching you hand sign, and Korra returned it. Naruto just gave a light chuckle to this. As they walked through the hallway out of the station Tenzin spoke, you don't need to escort us Naruto, I know the way. Naruto placed his hand over his heart, I'm hurt Uncle Tenzin, can't I at least spend time with my godfather? Godfather? Korra questioned the relationship between her airbending master and the handsome lieutenant. Wait handsome. Korra thought with a small blush. Korra let me introduce Lieutenant Naruto Bifrong, Lin's son. Tenzin said. Wait, the chief's son? She asked, how in the world did a hard like her have a kid? She thought. You're probably thinking how did such a hard have a kid, right? Naruto asked with a knowing grin. Korra looked shocked, how did you know? Korra. Tenzin shouted in indignity. Korra laughed sheepishly and scratched the back of her head. Naruto shrugged, easy Uncle Tenzin, she just met mom at work, so it's understandably really. But she is a good person. So why are you escorting us Naruto? Tenzin asked. I wanted to meet the water princess here of course. The teen said. Water princess. Korra muttered. 
I like to give nicknames out to my friends. I don't even know you though. She answered as she crossed her arms. Naruto took her hand and gave it a light peck, a pleasure to meet you Avatar Korra, I'm Naruto Bifong. Korra quickly took her hand back and fought down a blush, which she failed miserably at. Always the charmer. Tenzin muttered. So where are we going? Naruto asked. We? Tenzin said with a raised eyebrow. Naruto nodded, I said I would escort you, and I would like to get to know my new friend better. Don't you have to return to your duties Naruto? The elder questioned tiredly. I already punched out for the day, so mom can't complain. He said with his usual grin that reminded Tenzin of his grandmother. Tenzin, please don't send me back home. Korra pleaded. You blatantly disobeyed my wishes and the orders of the White Lotus. He said. The Tar agreed with me that I should come. She said my destiny is in Republic City. Korra argued. Don't bring my mother into this. Tenzin said with anger as his face turned red. Naruto laughed and Tenzin turned to glare at the blonde, but his head was turned and was whistling innocently. Look, I can't wait any longer to finish my training. Being cooped up and hidden away from the world isn't helping me become a better avatar. I saw a lot of the city today and it's totally out of whack. I understand now why you needed to stay, but it needs me too. Korra said. Tenzin struggled with coming up with an argument with Korra's words, but was tongue-tied. Is this your polar bear dog miss? Asked an officer who was being licked by said polar bear dog. Republic City Docks. Naruto watched as Korra started to head towards the White Lotus members so she could return the South Pole. Personally he wanted to get to know the girl a bit more stupid Tenzin. Suddenly two air gliders landed next to Korra and Tenzin's three children, Janora, Iki, and Milo, ran to the young avatar. Korra. They each shouted. Are you coming to live with us on the island? Asked Iki excitedly. Korra knelt down and placed a hand on both Janora and Iki's shoulders, no, I'm sorry Iki, I have to go home now. Aw. Oh, said Iki. Hey guys. Naruto said as he walked up to them. Naruto. They said in happiness. Are you going to try and keep Korra here? You always said how it would be awesome to meet her. Iki asked in hope. Sorry Iki, it's not my call, but I can say it was great to meet her. He said as he flashed the water tribe girl a smile. Korra returned it and walked to the ship ready to take her home. Wait. Tenzin said as he stepped forward, I have done my best to guide Republic City towards the dream my father had for it. But you are right. It has fallen out of balance since he has passed. I thought I should put off your training in order to uphold his legacy, but you are his legacy. Tenzin said as he placed a hand on Korra's shoulder, you may stay and train airbending here with me, Korra gasped Republic City needs its avatar once again. He finished. Yes. Thank you. You're the best. Korra cheered. The kids cheered also and she hugged them all together. Naruto walked up to Tenzin and grinned, you are such a big softly. Be quiet Naruto. Tenzin said plainly. I'll try and keep her out of trouble. But I can see why grandma wanted to travel with Ong, she knew it was going to be an adventure, and I know it's going to be the same for Korra here. Naruto said smiling. Tenzin groaned at that. The next day at Republic City Town Hall. Naruto stood in uniform next to his mother as Korra stood on the podium as she started her speech. Korra cleared her throat, hello, I'm Korra, your new avatar. The crowd cheered. Does this mean you're moving into Republic City? Asked a reporter. Were you trying to send a message to the triads yesterday? Will you be fighting crime or the anti-bending revolution or both? Will you be working with Chief or Lieutenant Bifrong and the police? Um, yes, I am defiantly here to stay, but honestly, I don't exactly have a plan yet. See I'm still in training, but look all I know is Avatar Ong meant for this city to be the center of peace and balance in the world, and I believe we can make his dream a reality. Korra said sincerely, I look forward to serving you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you Republic City. Alright, that's all the questions the Avatar can answer for today. Tenzin said as he rushed Korra off the stage. Lin started to head back to the station and turned to Naruto, Naruto. Are you returning to the station? She asked. He shook his head, no, I best watch over my new friend, seeing that she's still new and all to the city. He said with a grin. Lin sighed and rubbed her temple, why must her son be so much like her mother when she was a child, very well keep an eye on her professionally of course. She said with a small smile getting a raise out of the boy. Naruto blushed, mom. Lin laughed and walked away. Now she gets a sense of humor. He muttered with a twitching eye as he followed Korra and Tenzin. The next day at Airbender Island. And in the final round the buzzerwisps won with a decisive knockout. Korra said excitedly as she read the paper, what do you say we go to the arena tonight and catch a few pro-bending matches? She asked excitedly. That sport is a mockery of the noble tradition of bending. Tenzin argued. Come on Tenzin, I've been dreaming to see a pro-bending match since I was a kid and now I'm just a fairy right away. Korra said as she pointed at the arena across the lake. 
Hora, you're not here to watch that drivel. You're here to finish your avatar training. So for the time being I want you to remain on the island. He said. Is that why you're keeping the white lotus sentries around to watch my every move? She asked as she pointed to the WL sentries guarding the dining hall. Yes, in order to learn airbending, I believe you require a calm and quiet environment free from any distractions. Tenzin lectured. All right, you're the master. Korra said reluctantly. Hey, those matches are overrated if you ask me. The voice of Naruto said. Korra turned around and saw Naruto at a nearby table. Naruto. What are you doing here? She asked in surprise. Naruto was out of his uniform and he was wearing a green tank top, black shorts, along with a pair of green wrist and ankle protectors. What really caught Korra's eye was the black bracelet on his left bicep. I stayed the night. He replied like it was nothing as he ate a piece of bread. Wouldn't your mother worry? She joked. Ouch, mama jokes already. You're mudslinging water princess and you should know that when it comes to mudslinging and earthbenders got no equal. He said grinning. Yay, well I think the avatar beats that argument. She shot back. Master airbending then you can play the avatar card. He replied smoothly. Cora winced at that, okay you got me on that one. But that will be the only one you get. She said as she pointed at him. And my witty charm wins again. He said grinning at her. Stupid pretty boy. She thought. Don't you have work? Questioned Tenzin with worry as his godson would have to feel his mother's wrath. Which could be very frightening he noted. I'm already doing it. Tenzin sighed, she one-eyed you to watch Cora, didn't she? He asked already knowing the answer. Yep. The blonde said as he took a bite of bread. So you're basically spying on me? Cora asked with suspicion. Not really water princess. I'm killing two birds with one stone. I get to hang out with my newest friend and can keep an eye on you from doing something that could backlash on Tenzin, mom, or both. Naruto answered as he looked into her eyes. Air temple training ground. So so, what do you think of Korra, Naruto ha ha ha. Iki asked excitedly as they waited for Tenzin and Korra. Naruto met as he threw Milo into the air and the young airbender landed on his shoulders with airbending, well, she's definitely headstrong, adventurous, a bit naive to how a public city works. Why's that? Iki asked interrupting him. Her grand entrance into the city. He simple stated and the three airbenders in the area nodded. Anyway, she's definitely the eager type too. But I think that's cool, oh and she's got an awesome ponytail. He said nodding. Yeah. Korra and Naruto are going to get married. Iki shouted. What? He said in surprise. You always said that you like girls with ponytails, and both of you are super strong benders, and 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 Korra could stay longer if you do, and I could be the flower girl. She continued excitedly. Iki calmed down. Jinora said. Iki just grinned impishly at her older sister, why? Are you upset that Naruto and Korra are gonna get married because Iki was stopped short as Jinora covered her mouth? Not another word. Jinora hissed quietly. Iki nodded and her sister let her go. Don't mind her Naruto, she's weird like that. Jinora said with a smile. Yes, yes she is. But in a good way. Naruto smiling at the two. They saw Korra in an airbender uniform and Tenzin entering the training ground. Korra's gonna airbend, Korra's gonna airbend. Iki said excitedly while jumping up and down. What is that contraption? Korra asked as she looked at the large training device. The time-honored tool that teaches the most fundamental aspects of airbending. Jinora would you like to explain this exercise? Tenzin asked his oldest child. The goal is to weave your way through the gates and to make to the other side without touching them. Jinora said as she gave a textbook answer. Seems easy enough. Korra said confidently. Jinora forgot to say that you have to make it through while the gates are spinning. Iki added. Tenzin stepped forward and released an air blast, and the gate started to spin. Tenzin took out a leaf, the key is to be like the leaf. He said as he sent the leaf through the device, flow with the movements of the gates. Jinora will demonstrate. Tenzin finished. Jinora wove through the gates with easy as Tenzin added commentary. Air bending is all about spiral movements. When you meet resistance you must be able to switch directions at a moment's notice. Jinora exited the gates on the other side and sent an air blast to get the gates to rotate again. Let's do this. Korra said with determination. Why do I feel the need to get the first aid kit? Naruto thought. They watched as Korra tried to go through the gates as she bounced off each one and was flown out the entrance. Korra got up again to try for a second time. Don't force your way through. Jinora said. Dance. Dance like the wind. Iki said. Be the leaf. Milo said. I'll go get the first aid kit. Naruto commented. Tenzin nodded, thank you Naruto. As he sighed and pinched the bridge of his nose. Later that night. Airbend. Korra said as she shot her hands forward at a picture of Lin Bifong. What is wrong with me? Airbend. She continued. She growled and shot a fireball at the paper. 
Something you're not telling me water princess. Cora turned to see Naruto eating an apple. Hey Naruto. Cora said awkwardly knowing that she just used his mother's picture as target practice. Don't let what happened today get you down water princess. It's just day one. He said as he threw her another apple he was carrying. Cora caught it and took a bite, thanks, but I feel like I'm just not cut out to be an airbender you know. That's what I first thought when I tried the gates when I was younger. Wait, you tried that the gates. But you're not an airbender. She stated. I know, but that doesn't mean you can't learn from other styles of bending. It was a good learning experience. So basically, even though you're not an airbender, you can go through the gates. She said with a pout since she was supposed to be an airbender and she couldn't do it. Yep. Took about a two months though, since I had to get out of my earthbending mentality. He said with a grimace. So how does that help me? She asked curiously. Simple, if I, one of the best earthbenders can do an airbending training exercise, then you as the avatar can do it too. Just give it some time. He said reassuringly. BP aren't you? She asked smiling. When you've learned from the greatest earthbender of all time and the creator of metalbending, you can say things like that. He said grinning. So toft ought you? She asked excitedly. When I was little. She even taught me how to feel the vibrations in the earth. That has to be awesome. It does help when interrogating someone. He responded with a grin. I've been meaning to ask, but what's with the bracelet? Cora asked. Naruto looked at his left bicep, oh. Have you heard the Space Earth story? Cora smiled, yeah, Master Katara said how a flaming rock fell from the sky when they were in Fire Nation territory, and how her brother Sokka forged a sword out of it. Yep, but he saved a small piece and gave it to my grandma, and she gave it to me before she left on her trip. Naruto sullenly said. Cora looked at his face and could see that he missed the famous woman, she was going to ask where she went until she heard some static. The two then heard the radio chatter in the distance talking about pro-bending. Naturally Cora decided to listen in, and Naruto followed her. The two were sitting on the roof as Naruto laid down, and Cora excitedly listened to the radio. And just as it was getting to the best part the radio was unplugged. Cora, Naruto, come down here please. Tenzin said holding the radio cable. Cora jumped down and entered the booth. Well Naruto just slid off the roof and landed on a soft pile of earth and walked in too. You shut it off at the best part. Cora complained. I thought I made myself clear. I don't want you listening to this distracting nonsense. Tenzin said with authority. But it's their radio. She said as she pointed to the White Lotus guards, and technically you said I couldn't watch a match. You didn't say anything about listening to one. Cora argued. Ah, loopholes. Gotta love them. Naruto commented, and the WL guards laughed a bit. You you know what I meant. Anyway should you be in bed, that goes for you too Naruto. He said as he used his airbending to flip his cape. The next day. Naruto was in his southern praying mantis stance with his eyes closed. He turned to his left and shot out three earth columns, and then followed with making branches of earth sticking out of them. He reversed the motion and made an earth line to his right at a tree, and then levitated several smaller rocks, and tried to compress them. He then proceeds to firing the compressed rocks at another tree and ripped holes into it. Am, still too slow in compressing. He muttered as he wiped his brow with a towel. He had been practicing for three hours straight. Wow that was cool. Said the voice of Cora. He turned to see her still airbending clothes, sipping what seemed to be a glass of lychee juice. Hey water princess, how are you doing? He said while panting. Meditation sucks. She said plainly. It is relaxing though. He countered as he fixed the terrain of his training area with earthbending. You sound like Tenzin. So what are you doing? She asked. Hey, just practice. I'm trying to compress large rocks quicker. He said. Cora finished her drink and started to help fixing the area with her earthbending, why? Naruto grinned, watch. He said as he brought up a medium-sized rock, compressed it in about 7 seconds and punched it, sending the fragments of the rock forward and pelting into a tree. Whoa. She said in awe. I call it a scatter shot. It's much more powerful than using an earth glove's individual tiles for firing. He said. That does seem useful. Cora admitted and may try it some time. Yep and that's why I want to get the timing down quicker. He said. Well I'm going to head off to bed. See ya in the morning Naruto. And try not to work too hard. She said. Naruto looked around and saw it was already dusk. Man time flies. He muttered and headed to his room. Later that night. Naruto watched as Cora snuck out of the temple and headed to the pro bending arena. Naruto sighed, I need a boat. At the arena. Naruto was walking around looking for Cora when he heard her in the contestant booth. Think you can sell me a few tricks. Cora said. Absolutely said one of the two boys in the booth with her. Right now. Come on Bolin. Said the other boy. Just ignore him. Yeah, I could sew you the basics. 
I'm just not sure how my earthbending would translate to your waterbending. But we'll figure it out. The boy named Bolin said. Won't be a problem, I'm actually an earthbender. Kor responded. I'm sorry. No no, I didn't mean to assume. It's that, since just figuring with your water tribe Jedip that you were a water tribe gal. Bolin said. No you're right, I'm a waterbender and a firebender. Kor said confidently. Hmm, I'm very confused right now. Bolin said. Naruto just laughed in his mind as he listened in. You're the avatar and I'm an idiot. The other boy said. Both are true. Kora said with a nod. Do you know what else is true? Naruto asked as he entered the room. Kora whirled around and eeped, Naruto hey, how's it going? She asked awkwardly. Fine, just fine. Had to sneak around and take a boat to get here and find you. Naruto said with a smile, and it wasn't his usual one. Um, Kora, who is this? Bolin asked with confusion. This is my friend Naruto. Kora answered. I'm also her glorified babysitter. Naruto said plainly. Naruto, I'm really really sorry, it's just you know. I wanted to see a match, really badly. Kora said trying to salvage the situation with her friend. Naruto sighed and pinched a bridge of his nose, Kora, I'm supposed to keep an eye on you, not confine you. Next time you want to go somewhere, tell me. Kora's eye went wide at this, seriously. She asked in hope. Yeah, just tell me, so I can come with you, okay? He asked. Kora run up and hugged him, yes, yes, yes. Naruto you're the best. She cheered. Alright water princess, hope you can keep up with your new friend and his tips. Naruto said as she let him go. Come on. Kora said in excitement as she grasped Bolin's hand and ran to the training room. Training area. Naruto was sitting off to the side with Bolin's brother Mako. Didn't think they would stick someone like you with a babysitting job. Said the firebender. And who is someone like me? Naruto questioned. Lieutenant Naruto Bifrong, Republic City's golden boy and poster boy of the police department. Mako answered as both he and Naruto watch Korra and Bolin practice. True I am those things, but I'm also Korra's friend. Personally I find it to be a vacation to watch over her. It was either this or catching one of thugs and writing paperwork all day. Naruto said with a shudder. Eh, funny. I thought since you're the chief son you got some of the better cases. Mako questioned with interest. Naruto glared at him, I don't ask for special treatment. I work my ass off like any other officer to get where I am today. If I do end up running the police department, then I'm going to earn it by going from the bottom up. Naruto said with determination. Mako just stared at him for a moment and spoke up to Korra, not bad. He said in a dull tone as he complimented her strike. What does it take to impress this guy? She asked Bolin. What? I said not bad. Mako said. Don't worry water princess. I think Mako here is just a man of few words. Naruto said. Mako gave him a grin, someone understands me. I'm gonna turn in. It was nice to meet you Avatar Korra, Lieutenant Naruto. He said as he walked to his room. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure. Korra said sarcastically. See you upstairs bro. Mako said as he walked out the room. Upstairs? You guys live here? Korra asked with interest. Yep. In the attic, but it's nothing fancy. But we have some great views. So back to bending, why don't you throw that combo one more time? Bolin asked. I got an idea. Hey Naruto, why don't you try? Korra asked. I'm not really a pro-bending earthbender. I'm more of a full-blown combat one. Naruto stated. But Korra wouldn't have any of that and dragged him over. Try. She said ordered and Naruto sighed. Naruto entered the stance he saw Korra using earlier and bounced on the balls of his feet. He unleashed a two-hit combo like Korra did and followed up with a spin kick to send another disc into the net and finished off with another two-hit combo and did it all this in rapid succession. Like that? He asked innocently. Both Korra's and Bolin's mouths went wide. You've done this before, haven't you? Kara asked plainly. It seemed interesting when I was a kid so I tried it out. Naruto said with a shrug. Okay awe-inspiring moment over. Now it's Kora's turn. Bolin said trying to make heads or tails of what he just saw, it was like a blur. Next day at the arena. Naruto and Kora were walking to Mako and Bolin's booth when Naruto spoke up, I heard you destroy the gates today. Want to talk about it? He asked. Not really. Kora said gruffly. You know you're not the only one to destroy them, right? Naruto said. Kora stopped mid-step and turned to him, you destroyed them too. She asked in shock since Naruto didn't seem the type to do that. Naruto shrugged, when I was young and I destroy about two or three. Nowhere near your number, but I know it can be frustrating to do it. Naruto said in sympathy. Kora nodded and they entered the booth. They saw Mako and Bolin looking somewhat down. We didn't miss your match, did we? You guys look like you lost already. Kora said. We might as well have. Bolin said. Asuk's a no good, no show. Mako said in irritation. 
You got two minutes to come out ready to play or you're disqualified. The referee said as he stuck his head through the door. Well there goes our shot at the tournament and the winnings. Mako said somberly. And you ask one of those guys to fill in. Naruto asked as he pointed to the other three players in the room. He didn't want his new friends to loss without even a fight. Nah, the rules say that you can only compete on one team. Bolin said in sadness. Well then, how about me? I'm a top-notch waterbender if I do say so myself. Korra stated. But you're the avatar, isn't that cheating? Bolin asked in confusion. It isn't cheating if I only do waterbending. Korra added. She does make a good point. Naruto added. No way. I'd rather forfeit than look like a fool out there. Mako said aggressively. Hey. Naruto said with narrowed eyes. Wow, thanks for the vote of confidence. Korra said as she too narrowed her eyes at the firebender. Time's up. You in or out? Asked the referee. We're in. Korra said. We are? Asked Mako. Yes. Bolin said as he pumped his fists. Hey, I didn't agree to this. Mako argued. Naruto snorted, sorry Mako, but once she gets an idea in her head, she does it. He said as he patted the firebender on the shoulder. What he said. Korra said as she got into uniform. This girl is crazy. Mako said plainly. Normal is overrated anyway. Naruto told him. Naruto watched from the booth as Korra tried and failed to help the fire ferrets. Then she performed earthbending, leaving the crowd speechless. Naruto suddenly felt a chill go up his spine. How ominous. Korra apparently was allowed to continue as long as she only did waterbending. The opposing team focused on Korra till she hit the drink. Naruto stared down and remembered that ominous feeling and saw Tenzin standing over Korra. Well, this is going to be interesting. The blonde muttered. Round 3 started and Mako and Bolin were cornered by one member of the other team, as the remaining members focused on Korra. Naruto walked up to Tenzin as he watched the match. Great evening for a match right? He asked the bald man. Tenzin narrowed his eyes at the blonde, you were supposed to keep an eye on her. And I am. You can't keep her locked up Uncle Tenzin, you're doing what my great-grandparents did to Grandma Toph. She needs to see the world not hid away from it. Naruto said as a smile graced his face watching Korra. Tenzin turned to see Korra rotating around the attacks aimed for her just like an airbender would, how about that? He muttered. Told you. Naruto said as he lightly punched him in the arm. Tenzin rubbed his arm as the two continued to watch the opposing team run out of gas, and the fire ferrets capitalized on this and won the match. Wohoo. Tenzin cheered, then clear his throat and promptly left. He, that's Korra for you. Always making things interesting. Naruto said as he watched Tenzin leave. Later at Air Temple Island. Naruto and Korra were laying against Naga the polar bear dog watching the stars. So you joined the team right? He asked her. Yep. And you apologized to Tenzin. Yep. And you promised to buy me lunch for an entire week. He added. Yep. Hey wait, don't add things like that in when you're asking questions. Korra said as she got up and looked over on the other side of Naga. Still too naive at times water princess. But I think this will be good for you. He commented. Yeah. Hey Naruto. She asked. Yeah. Thanks for not telling Tenzin when I was sneaking out. She said sincerely. Naruto shrugged, it would have been boring if I told him and we wouldn't have made new friends. Still thanks. Anytime water princess. Naruto said. I'll keep that in mind earth prince. Korra said. It was early morning. Naruto was in his usual garb drinking some tea and reading some papers from the station next to Tenzin, as he too drank his morning tea. Naruto's face wasn't carrying his usual smile or grin as he read the papers. Tenzin saw this and spoke up, is there a problem Naruto? He asked with concern. Equalists. Naruto stated. Tenzin frowned hearing this and set down his tea, what has happened? He said in a no-nonsense attitude. Naruto sighed, they're up to something and it's going to happen soon. I've looked into it as many times as I could but the blonde trailed off. But what? Tenzin asked with tension. I just don't see how Amon is going to do it. Unless he's planning genocide for benders, I just don't see how he is going to fight something that is genetic, that's what's frustrating me. Naruto said with a growl. Tenzin stared at the boy. He knew that Naruto had done some undercover work to find out what Amon and his men have been up to, but sadly, he had found little to nothing and could look no more since he was almost caught when his identity was discovered. But it was due to this that a mole was found in the police department. How much time do you think we have till they start whatever it is they're planning? The airbending master questioned. Minimal, a day to a few days tops. Naruto said as he threw the papers on the table and drank his tea in one gulp, and I'm in more of a position to go with the former due to my knowledge of Amon. How do you think Korra will fit into this? Tenzin questioned further. Korra is a big player in this game. When she arrived the Equalist's movements increased to twice as much as before. 
So my theory is Korra will be playing a role soon, and it probably won't be good. Naruto said as he looked serious towards Tenzin. This is troubling news Naruto. I will discuss this with the council later today. In the meantime, keep your eyes peeled. Tenzin said. Naruto nodded, you don't need to tell me. Suddenly a white lotus entry interrupted the two, excuse me Mr. Bifrong, there is a pack of gay for you. He said as he handed the blonde a medium-sized box that had holes in it. From what the earthbender could tell, something was moving inside. He heard a familiar yip and smiled brightly, ha, bet he was too much for mom to handle without me around. Naruto said as he took the box. Tenzin started to sweat, Naruto is that what I think it is? And if so please let me leave the room first before you open it. You could hear the small bit of panic in his voice. Naruto said nothing as he opened the box, and an orange blur flew out of it. It was an orange fox. It was about the same size of a fire ferret, if not a little bigger. The fox was resting on Naruto's shoulder and the blonde cooed at it, hey Kurama, how's my favorite sneaky fox doing? He asked as he scratched the fox behind the ear. Yep. Kurama answered. Thought so. Mom sent you here to keep an eye on me huh? Naruto asked. Yep. Naruto huffed, she should know I can take care of myself. The fox smacked him in the back of his head with his tail and snickered. Ow, you little furball. You are so lucky you're a good tracker or I would skin you. The blonde shouted. Naruto looked towards Tenzin, and he was far across on the other side of the dining hall. Naruto tilted his head to the side, what's your deal Tenzin? You look like Korra just firebombed the entire temple. Tenzin was sweating profusely as he stared at the fox. For some reason, any time he was alone with that monster it attacked him, and when Naruto or anyone else came in, it played all innocent. It was evil, and that was all Tenzin needed to know to stay away from that little demon. He had lost many a good pair of underwear to it. Morning. Said the dull voice of Korra as she walked into the dining hall while rubbing her eyes and released a yawn. Hey water princess, ready for practice today? Naruto asked as he could see, Korra was not a morning person. Dude now. Talk when tummy full. She said in a childlike tone. Naruto just smiled and handed her a loaf of bread, the wise words of Avatar Korra. I'll be sure to chronicle them for you later. He joked. Korra just glared at him with her black ringed eyes, just wait till I get the energy to punch you. She said menacingly. Naruto just gained a sly smirk, save it for practice hotshot. You'll need it. As he made a cup of tea for her. Hey Tenzin, you going to join us? Naruto asked the man. Tenzin shook his head and left the room in a dash. Naruto raised an eyebrow, what's his deal? He wondered out loud. Korra just shrugged and stuffed her face. Pro bending arena, training area. Mako threw a medicine ball at Korra and caught it. What's the big idea with making me train this early in the morning? Korra asked with irritation, the morning is evil. She whispered and she threw the medicine ball at Bolin. We're the rookies, so we get the worst time slot in the gym. Bolin answered and threw to Mako. And you're the rookiest of us all. So we got to get you up to speed if we want to survive in the tournament. Deal with it. Mako said to Korra as he threw the ball roughly at Korra. Korra narrowed her eyes, you deal with it. She said as she threw it back to Mako, who caught it, but was sent a few feet across the floor. Korra had a satisfied smile when Mako hit the floor. Ouch. Muttered Naruto as he sat in a corner reading a book and playing with both Pabu and Kurama, who happened to be playing along well with each other. The door to the gym opened. The well-dressed man in a top hat entered. There are my little hard-working street urchins. He walked up to the group and put a hand on Korra's shoulder, it's an honor to finally meet you Avatar. The man said in a business-like tone. And you are? Korra questioned the man in her personal space. The man took of his hat and gave a light bow, Butaka. I run this whole pro-bending shebang. Here are your winnings from the last match. He said as he handed some cash to Mako. He then started to talk about fees. Korra walked over to Naruto and punched him in the shoulder. The blonde looked away from his book, Yes Water Princess. Can I help you? He asked as if he didn't even feel the punch. Korra's eye twitched as she wanted to keep her promise to punch him, but didn't want him to see it coming. She even put some strength behind it too. Where was the yelp of pain? She looked down and picked up Kurama, you never said you had a pet fox. She questioned. He isn't a pet. He's my tracker. Naruto answered as Kurama yipped in agreement and licked Korra's cheek. Korra gave a laugh at being licked by the fox and petted his head, still is pretty cute though. She said with a smile. Naruto snorted, you and about every female that meets him. Korra gave a sly smile, oh, so you need a fox to get the girls, huh? She asked in a condescending tone. Not really. My natural charm does that by itself. Naruto said plainly. So you've dated a lot before. She asked with curiosity, but frowned on the inside. Naruto shook his head, not really. Most girls wanted me for my looks, wealth, fame, or all three. 
Then there were the blind dates that mom sent me on to meet girls from other prestigious families who were just like my fangirls. At most, I have been on five dates that ended with me never wanting to see them again. He said with a shiver. Hora just smiled brightly at that. She then looked over to Mako and Bolin who finished talking to the arena owner. Both walked over to see what the gloom-looking faces were for. Bolin turned to Cora with hope in his eyes, you wouldn't happen to have a secret avatar bank account overflowing with gold, would you? He asked. Cora pulled out her pockets, I got nothing. I never really need money. I've always had people taking care of me. She said with a bit of happiness. Then I wouldn't say you've had nothing. Mako said bitterly as he put the medicine ball in his bag. She turned to Bolin, sorry, I didn't mean she trailed off. No, it's alright. It's just ever since we lost our parents we've been on our own. Bolin said with sadness. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Cora said with sadness. Sorry for your lose. Naruto said somberly. So anyway how are we going to come up with the money? Mako asked the group. Well for one you could get a loan from the bank, but that wouldn't work in the long run, even if they agreed to give you the money. Naruto said in a think position. Why's that? Mako asked, as Naruto seemed to be a good ideas man. You're a rookie team for one, you're also the dark horse in the championship. Even with Korra on the team, you may not get the loan. And in the long run, they would ask for a hefty sum of the championship winnings, and that is if you win. I'm not trying to bring you down, but I'm just describing it from the bank's point of view. So it would be best to not try that one. What else? Korra asked, as she really wanted to play in this tournament. How much do you need? Naruto asked as he looked at Mako. Three, yuans. Mako said with a sigh. The next thing to do would be to get a sponsor to help you. But again, no real company or big money family is going to be willing to risk cash on a rookie team, because most of them would rather bet their chances on a more seasoned team. Naruto stated. But, you're a beef wrong right? You could sponsor us. Korra added excitedly. Bolin got a smile on his face. Mom is in charge of what the family spends its money on and as you can tell, she isn't a big fan of yours water princess. Plus she wouldn't want to waste the family fortune on pro bending. Both Korra and Bolin's faces dropped. The final thing, do as many odd jobs as you can. Other than that, I got nothing else. Naruto said with a shrug. Mako thought about the blonde suggestions, no, you've been a help Naruto. I'll go look into some of those things. The firebender said. Or, we can have Pabu perform circus trick. I've been training him for a while. Bolin said in excitement as he held up the fire ferret, now people would pay good money to see that. Come on Bolin. We need serious ideas. Mako said in annoyance. I was serious. Bolin muttered in sadness. Don't worry about it, I'll figure something out. I always do. Mako said as he left the gym. I'll talk to some guys who owe me and see if they got any jobs for you guys. Naruto said as he picked Kurama. Thanks Naruto. Mako said as he waved goodbye. Later at Air Temple Island. Hora was currently going through the gates as Janora and Iki spun it for her. Good, light on your feet. Instructed Janora as she watched Korra dance through the gates. As Korra took a breather, Janora and Iki looked to the side to see Mako walking up to the girls. Oh, he's cute. Korra, is that the handsome firebender boy that drives you crazy? But I still think Naruto is cuter. Janora said. Of course you would say that Naruto is cuter since you started Iki, but Janora blasted her away with an air blast. Korra turned to see Mako coming up and sent Janora away with an earth column. The two young airbenders landed some distance away, but Iki giggled at both Korra's and her sister's expanse. Oh, hey Mako. Korra said awkwardly. You seen Bolin? Mako asked bluntly. Nice to see you too. And no, I hadn't seen him since practice. Think something's wrong? Korra asked with concern. I don't know. Bolin has a knack for getting into stupid situations. Mako said with a sigh, see you later. Wait, if he's missing, I could help you look for him. Korra offered. Mako waved her off, nah, I got it. Hey, let me help you. I'll go get Naruto. Korra said with a smile, we'll also take Naga. Mako blinked, who's Naga? Korra grinned, my best friend and a great tracker. Republic City Streets. Korra, Naruto, and Mako were riding on Naga, while Kurama was riding on Naga's head. Their best friend is a polar bear dog. Somehow that makes perfect sense. Mako commented while sitting behind Naruto. I'll take that as a compliment city boy. Korra said cheekily. Technically it does make sense. All avatars seem to have an animal guide of sorts. Examples would be avatar Roku's dragon, Fang, avatar Ong's flying bison, Appa, and then you got Korra and Naga. Naruto explained. Huh, you learn something new every day. Mako said nodding and understanding. They eventually arrived at Republic City Square. Well, this is his usually hangout. Mako said as he dismounted from Naga. And Naruto and Korra followed him. 
Mako eventually made his way to a group of kids, you guys seen my brother around today? Mako asked. One kid with a hat spoke up, perhaps but my memory is a little foggy. Maybe you could help clear it up? He said as he stuck out his hand. I could just shack him up a bit. Naruto muttered to Korra and she laughed. Mako scratched his head, you're good Scoochie, I'll give you that. Mako said as he gave some bills to the kid, a real pro. Yeah, I seen him. Scoochie said. When? Mako demanded. About noon. What was he doing? Mako pressed. He was performing some kind of monkey rat circus and then he said as he stuck out his hand again. Mako rolled his eyes and handed him a few more bills, and then what? Why did he leave? Scoochie covered his mouth and leaned in, Shady Shin showed up and flashed some serious cash. Bo took off with him in his hot rod. Mako looked shocked the triple threats, the red monsoons, the Anaikais, all the triads are muscling up for something real big. Now that's all you're getting out of me. Scoochie said as he called his friends to follow him as he left. Hora turned to Naruto, was he lying? She asked the blonde. Naruto shook his head, nope, he told the truth, and Bolin seems to be in some serious trouble. As I had reports stating the triads were up to something. He said. Sounds like a turf wars Brewin and Bolin's about to get caught right in the middle. Mako said seriously. They were heading towards the triple threat triads HQ, when all of a sudden Naga started chasing a fire fared. Well Naga. Korra said as she pulled the reins. That's Pabu. Mako exclaimed as Pabu ran up a street sign. No Naga, Pabu is a friend, not a snack. Korra commented. Hirama yipped at Pabu and Pabu squeaked back and tapped noses with Naga, and then jumped onto the polar bear dog and climbed up Mako's shoulder. We got to hurry. Mako said in distress. They made it to the HQ, and Naruto put his hand to the ground. There's no one in there. The triple treats would have guards outside too. There is some activity going on in the back though. Naruto said as they rushed inside and head through the back door. As they exited the back door they saw a bunch of equalists and a large truck, which just so happened to have Bolin tied up and gagged in the back of it. Bolin. Cried Mako as he tried to run to the truck. Two equalists on motorcycles threw a canister that released a green gas. Naga, come. Korra said as she Naruto and Mako ran out of the gas and jumped on Naga's back. Naga gave chase to the equalists as Naruto and Korra threw rock columns at them, and Mako sent some fireballs their way. They eventually entered a wide area. Three equalists turned around, and one threw a lasso at Naga's feet, causing her to trip and the group to fly off their ride. The three equalists jumped off their bikes and flipped towards the group. Naruto was the first to recover as he flipped out of the way as his opponent went for a heel drop, and Naruto quickly got into his stance and danced around the equalist and raised a small earth column at his foot, off-balancing the Kai blocker, then a fist-sized rock flew up from the ground and hit the equalist in the face, causing him to stagger a bit. Naruto then elbowed his staggered opponent that sent him rolling onto the ground, and the blonde followed up with an earth line, making him fly further. Naruto turned to see that both Korra and Mako were already done and no doubt had their Kai blocked. He raised a 15x15 earth wall in front of them and had it shot out 1x1 blocks of stone at the Kai blockers. They tried to dodge but most of them hit and they did a crawling run to their bikes to get away. His first opponent seemed to have limped to his bike too. Naruto ran up to Korra and Mako to check if they were okay. Naruto helped Korra up as Pabu and Karama bit through Naga's rope. Thanks. Korra said as she threw her fist forward trying to firebend. It isn't going to work Water Princess, they blocked your Kai, it'll wear off. Naruto said. DCH, Kai blockers, Amon's henchman. Mako said in some anger as he rubbed his wrist, though I have to say that Naruto really knew how to lay the pressure on them. He commented. Korra turned to Naruto, yeah, how did you do that? She eagerly asked. Naruto shrugged, I've fraught a few and learned some was to counter them. He stated quickly. Wait a mon. That anti-bending guy with the mask. Korra asked wondering if she heard Mako's comment correctly. Naruto nodded, yes, he is the leader of the equalists. What would they want to with the triple threats? Korra questioned in confusion. Whatever it is, it can't be good. TCH, I can't believe Bolin got himself into this mess. Mako in anger and worry. Naruto grabbed his should, don't worry. We'll get him back. He said. Korra nodded, I promise, we will. She said with determination. They continued searching but had found nothing. We've been out all night. No sign of him. Korra said. We got to keep looking. Mako encouraged. We will Mako. Naruto reassured. But where can we look? Mako thought out loud. Poor gasped, I have an idea. She said and mushed Naga to move. Republic City National Park. They stopped by the fountain, and the three animal companions took a drink while the benders talked. When I first came to town, I ran into an equalist protester over there. Korra said as she pointed to a large area in the park. And you think they'll know where Bolin is? Mako asked with skepticism. 
It's our only lead right now. Cora countered. I think I know who you're talking about Cora. Did he have pale skin, dark brown hair with mutton chops, and a black hat? Naruto asked. Yeah. Cora said in shock at the perfect description of the protester. Then he'll be here, no worries. But, let me do the talking, okay? He ordered. The other two nodded. They waited as they leaned on Naga. Cora was a bit fidgety, so she started a conversation with Mako. So why is Bolin running around with the triple threats triad anyway? She asked. Mako looked a bit uncomfortable but answered anyway, well we, we used to do some work for them back in the day. Mako said nonchalantly. Wait. Are you some kind of criminal? Cora asked heatedly. No. Both Naruto and Mako answered. Mako looked at Naruto and then palmed his face, you looked to see if we were criminals, didn't you? He said. Yep. And both of you are clean as a whistle. But, I am curious to know what you did for them. Naruto said. I just ran numbers for them and stuff. We were orphans out on the street. I did what I had to do to survive and protect my little brother. Mako said as he crossed his arms and looked away. I'm not judging you Mako. And it was good you got early. Some kids have done what you have and stayed and became full-blown criminals. Naruto commented. I'm sorry. It must have been really hard. Cora said, can I ask, what happened to your parents? She asked. Naruto slapped his face from Cora's lack of tact. Mako sighed, they were mugged by a firebender. He cut them down right in front of me. I was eight. He said with sadness. Mako Cora said with worry. Mako pulled his scarf to cover his mouth, Bolin is the only family I have left. If anything happened to him he trailed off. We'll find him. Naruto said. The next morning. Naruto's eyes opened as the sun hit his face and felt a weight on his shoulder and looked to see Cora snoozing on it. He gave a grin and was about to wake her up when a blaring annoying voice echoed throughout the park. Equality now. Equality now. We want equality now. Both Cora and Mako started to wake up. Cora looked up to what she was leaning on and looked right into Naruto's grinning face. Sleep well water princess. He asked with amusement. Ah. She shouted in surprise and crawled away with a big blush on her face. If you wanted me to be your pillow Cora, you just had to ask. The blonde teased, causing her blush to increase. Mako looked over and had an amused look on his face. Non-benders of Republic City. Amon calls you to action. Take back your city. It's time for the the protester gasped as he saw Naruto and Korra approaching him. It's you again. He said as he started to talk into his megaphone, you cannot silence me Avatar. Naruto, not liking a megaphone in his face slapped it out of his hand and it broke in when it hit the ground. Hwa, what have I said about putting a megaphone in my face? Naruto asked menacingly. Hwa gulped to not the Lieutenant Bifong. Naruto smiled, right. Now, a friend of mine was taken by a group of Kai Blocker yesterday. Maybe you can provide some insight for me? The blonde asked nicely. I have no idea what you're talking about. Kwa said stubbornly. Naruto just stared at the man, and it unnerved him. It was like he was looking into his soul. You really need to stop lying Kwa. What would your parents say? Naruto said with a predator-like smile. Don't talk about my parents. He said paling a bit. Oh, that's right. Naruto nodded in understanding, they were big supporter of Avatar on weren't they? And you were always getting into trouble in order to get attention for yourself by opposing the majority opinion. And what better way to get attention than be a protester for the equalists? You have a bit of a record don't you? Most of it is petty crimes, but the shame of having a son that opposed the very man they supported. TSK, TSK. The blonde said as he grabbed a few flyers and started to walk away, but turned to face Kwa one more time. You're like a lost cola sheep who's just following a trend or something. Do most of us a favor and stop being an attention-seeking child. Mako and Cora just blinked and followed him. Hey. What have to asking about Bolin? Mako asked. Naruto held up the flyers he took. Whatever is going down. It's going to happen at 9 p.m. at the location on the back of these flyers. The earthbender said. They both looked in shock. How did you know there was a map on the back of them? Cora asked curiously. Naruto sighed as they sat on a bus stop bench. I did some undercover work to find out some things about Amon and got in pretty high ranked in his Kai Blocker squad. I meet him a few times also. So I know how he operates things. Naruto said. That's how you know how to fight them. Korra said in awe. Yes and it is a useful talent to learn. As I infiltrated his group, it turned out that he had a mole in the police department. The mole found out I was there and I was nearly captured by him personally, but I managed to fight him off evenly until my backup arrived and he fled. We later found the mole, who was a very flirty secretary. Naruto explained. One could see the look of respect on Mako's face. He had heard things about Amon, and one was that he was a ruthlessly good Kai blocker. 
for Naruto to hold his own against the masked man was definitely a testament to the blonde skills. Hora just really wanted to have a spar with Naruto with earthbending now. Anyway, let's turn these flyers over and connect them. Naruto said. Like a puzzle. Korra asked with amusement. Yep. The blonde nodded. Let's see, there are four different images. So if we do this Mako said as he connected the images and put it towards the bus stop's map, and bingo, we got it. Mako said happily. Nice. There's a police safe house on the way for undercover operations where we can get some clothes to disguise ourselves in. Naruto said as he walked to Naga. Adamon's evil lair. Naruto was wearing a brown pea coat and had a black wig to cover his golden locks. He had an eye patch over his right eye and was walking with a limp. He looked about in his fifties. Hora was wearing brown coat, Mako's red scarf, and a beanie hat. Mako was wearing a green high-color jacket with a paperboy hat. Naruto. What is with the eye patch and the limp? Korra asked with a giggle. Naruto wildly limped to her and got in her face, you wanna know why missy? A red monsoon waterbender thought it would be fun to scramble out me eye with an icicle, and a triple threat earthbender thought it was a keen idea to give me a permanent limp. Those answer your curiosity missy. Naruto said with a thick accent. Hora just full-blown laughed. Naruto was a riot. Mako smiled, good cover story. It explains your rude personality nicely. He said as he adjusted his hat. I'll be going in first you brats. You enter two minutes later and we meet up inside. Best way to stay out of suspicion. And don't be forgotten your flyer invite either. Naruto said and they nodded. Naruto hobbled to the doorway and was stopped by the bouncer, where's your invite old timer? The large bouncer asked. And me I patch you oaf. Now let me in. I want these benders suffering like no one's business for the damage they done to me. Naruto shouted at the man. Easy old timer, just show the invite. Naruto roughly searched his pocket and hand the large man the flyer. The bouncer nodded and moved out the doorway, welcome my brother and rest assured, those benders will get what's coming to them. The bouncer said. Naruto hobbled in and waited for Mako and Korra. Korra grinned at him, saw your performance, and I got to say you would be a great actor. Agreed. Mako said with a smile. They stood in the audience and heard a voice over the ringing through the building. Please welcome your hero. Your savior. Amon. The crowd cheered as Amon and his guard rose from the stage. Amon walked up to the mic on stage and cleared his throat. My quest for equality began many years ago. When I was a boy, my family and I lived on a small farm. We weren't rich and none of us were benders. This made us very easy targets for a firebender that extorted my father. One day, my father confronted this man, but when he did that firebender took my family from me. Then he took my face. I've been forced to hide behind a mask ever since. Amon said and paused. As you know, the Avatar has recently arrived in Republic City. The crowd booed. And if she were here she would tell you that bending brings balance to the world, but she is wrong. The only thing bending has brought to the world is suffering. It has been the cause of every war in every year. But that is about to change. I know you have been wondering what is the revelation you are about to get your answer. Since the beginning of time, the spirits have as guardians of our world and they have spoken to me. The crowd gasped. They say the Avatar has failed humanity. And that is why the spirits have chosen me to usher in a new era of balance. They have granted me a power that will make equality a reality. The power to take a person's bending away, permanently. Amon said menacingly. That's impossible. There is no way. Korra said in denial. This guy is insane. Mako responded. Not really. Naruto said as the two turned to him and noticed that he lost the eye patch, was standing up straight, and was talking normal again, Avatar on remove Fire Lord Oz's eyes bending towards the ending of the One Year War. From what I found out, an ancient spirit had taught it to him. I wonder if Amon came in contact with that spirit or maybe another that showed him how to do it. It would explain how he would get rid of benders much better than the plans I thought up he would do. The blonde muttered to them. Now for a demonstration. Amon said, please welcome, Lightning Bolt Zolt, leader of the Triple Threat Triad, and one of the most notorious criminals in Republic City. The crowd booed at him. Ah boo yourself. The tied up triad leader shouted. Another four benders sat nearby surrounded by Kai Blocker, one happened to be Bolin. There's Bolin. Korra said and she was about to rush the stage until Naruto grabbed her shoulder, are you nuts? We need a plan to extract Bolin without getting Amon and those Kai Blockers on our tails afterwards. Alright Naruto, but think fast. Korra said trusting Naruto. Zolt has amassed a fortune by extorting and abusing non-benders, but his reign of terror is about to come to an end. Now in the interest of fairness. I will give Zolt the chance to fight to keep his bending. Amon said. Naruto watched the battle, if one could even call it that, and very quickly as Amon pressed his thumb to Zolt's forehead and then pushed the firebender to the ground. Zolt tried to get up and shot a fireball at Amon, but nothing happened. What, what did you do to me? 
Zolt asked in fear. Your firebending is gone forever. Amon told the now ex-firebender. Amon turned to the crowd, the era of bending is over. A new era of equality has begun. The crowd started to cheer wildly. Any ideas yet? Korra asked Naruto as Mako waited for the game plan. Yes. Mako, I need you to get as close to the stage as you can. I'm going to create some cloud cover when it's Bolin's turn. Korra you get my back as I clear a way for Mako and Bolin to run through. Then we jump on Naga and get out of here. Got it. Naruto asked. They nodded. Good. Naruto said as Mako slowly advanced towards the stage. Naruto saw that Mako was close enough and raised his hands and foot into the air and stomped hard, thus creating a large dust cloud that filled the entire building. The crowd started to panic and run about as Mako jumped to the stage and threw a Kai Bender, who was going to recapture Bolin into the distance, and grabbed his brother's hand as they ran to Naruto. The cloud cover slowly died, and some Kai blockers surrounded both Korra and Naruto, and the blonde raised a large pentagon wall and pushed the walls forward, and Korra did the same. Naruto saw Mako and Bolin as they stopped right next to them. Alright, we got to bulldoze our way out of here. Everyone grab onto me. Naruto order. The group did as instructed and Naruto created an earth wave and rode it outside. That on Naga while I blocked them off. Naruto instruct and he made a large earth wall that blocked off the entire alleyway from the Kai blockers. Naruto stood on top of the wall he made and looked right at Amon. Nothing was said between the two, but the message was clear. We will meet again and fight once more. Naruto jumped down and headed home. Air Temple Island. Both Korra and Naruto walked down a hall in the temple silently till they saw Tenzin and some white lotus entries. Tenzin turned to see them and looked relieved. Thank goodness. I was just about to send out a search party. Are you both alright? The Air Master asked with concern. Korra just shook her head. Did you find your friend? Tenzin asked. Yes, we did. But we found out how Amon is planning to deal with benders. Naruto said. We were at an equalist rally. We saw Amon. He can take people's bending away, for good. Korra said. That's, that's impossible. Only the Avatar has ever possessed that ability. Tenzin argued. We saw him Uncle Tenzin. With our own eyes, we saw it. Naruto stated. Tenzin sighed, I believe you both. I don't know how Amon has achieved this power, but this means the revelation is more dangerous than ever. He said as he looked at the city in the distance, no bender is safe. Ahhhh. Korra shouted from her sleep as she woke up covered in sweat and was panting. A second later her door was broken down. Korra. Naruto shouted as he had several rocks levitating around him as he scanned the room. After he saw the coast was clear, the rocks fell to the ground and he walked up to her. Are you alright Korra? He asked with concern, as he sat on her bed. Korra turned her head away and nodded, yeah, just a bad dream is all, ha ha ha. She said with a hollow chuckle trying to throw off his concern. DSKTSK Water Princess, it isn't smart to lie to a lie detector like me. If something's the matter I'm willing to talk about it, if you are. Naruto said sincerely. Nothing's wrong. Korra said aggressively, but she turned to face Naruto, sorry, I I didn't mean to yell. She said meekly. It's about Amon, right? Naruto asked knowingly. Korra looked at him in shock. You know it's okay to be afraid. Hell I'm somewhat scared. If I had lost our fight, I would have lost my bending to him. WH who says I'm afraid. Korra argued back weakly. Naruto flicked her forehead. Ow. Korra said as she rubbed her forehead. Bad girls get punished for lying water princess. Naruto said teasingly. Korra just turned her head away grumbling about assault. Well, when you want to talk, I'm always here. But if you want me to protect you, I could always be your teddy platypus bear. He said teasingly. Korra turned red at the implication of that and went to punch him, but sadly he was already at the door. Naruto grinned at her, well, I better get going, or Tenzin might think we were doing something unscrupulous in his temple. Naruto laughed as he saw Korra turn tomato red in the face and dodged a fireball from her. His laughter filled the hallway as he left. Damn that pretty boy. Korra muttered and went back to sleep with a huff. Later that afternoon. So Terlock is putting together a task force. Is this another one of his ploys to get more power? Naruto asked Tenzin as they fed the flying bison colony on the island. You and I both know the answer to that Naruto. Tenzin said as he airbend a pile of hay to some baby bison, but do you believe that man had the audacity to compare himself to my father? Tenzin said in anger. Naruto signed as he petted a baby bison and giving it some hay, the man has always been messed up Tenzin. You do know he'll try to get Korra's support, right? Naruto said as he turned to the air master. Knowing him he will try, but hopefully Korra won't be reckless enough to join. Tenzin said with a sliver of hope. He'll also try and get me too. I'm known to have fought Amon evenly, if I join that's a major morale booster for this task force of his. 
If somehow he gets Korra, I'll have to join too. She is strong, but she isn't ready for Amon. Naruto said. I agree with you on that. How has she been? Tenzin asked with curiosity. Amon's got her spooked Tenzin, badly. She had a nightmare this morning, and I tried to talk to her about it, but she didn't want to. Naruto mentioned with a bit of sadness. I see. Give her time Naruto, I'm sure she will talk to one of us eventually about it. Tenzin said with a sigh. I think it's time we get something to eat. Naruto recommended as he saw the sun setting. Agreed, I hope Pima has dinner ready as I am starving. Tenzin said as his stomach growled somewhat. Naruto smiled at him, will we best go feed the monster you call a stomach then? He quipped, earning him an air blast to the face. Later that night. Everyone was seated around the table for dinner. We are grateful for this delicious food, for happiness, for compassion, and Tenzin spoke as he prayed before the meal. The Le voice interrupted him. I'm not interrupting, am I? Spoke an obnoxious voice. Everyone at the table turned to see Councilman Terlock. This is my home Terlock. We're about to eat dinner. Tenzin said with a hinge of anger. Terlock faint ignorance, good, because I am absolutely famished. The councilman said. Tenzin narrowed his eyes at the man. Terlock saw this and smiled, airbenders never turn away a hungry guest, am I right? He asked in a taunting tone. Tenzin sighed, I suppose so. He sat down and Pima glared at him with crossed arms. Tenzin just shrugged at his wife. Ah, you must be the famous Avatar Korra. It is truly an honor. Terlock said with a bow, I councilman Terlock, representative from the Northern Water Tribe. He said. Korra stood up and bowed to him, nice to meet you. She said. The pleasure is always councilman Terlock. Naruto said in a neutral tone. Ah, Lieutenant Bifong. It is always a pleasure to see one of Republic City's best and brightest. Terlock said in a pleasant tone. As Terlock sat down on by Korra's left side, Ikki got close to him. Why do you have three ponytails and how come you smell like a lady? You're weird. She interrogated. Naruto snorted. Terlock looked at the girl, well are you precocious. He said he then turned to Korra, so, I've been reading about all your adventures in the papers. Infiltrating Amon's rally, now that took some real initiative. Oh, thanks. I think you're the first authority figure in the city who's happy I'm here. Korra said honestly. Ouch Korra, cheap shot. I'm happy you're here and I'm an authority figure. Naruto said with a pout. Korra turned to Naruto with a smile, easy there Naruto. I meant an old authority figure, not a teenager like you. And it's fun having you around. She said. Aw, Korra likes me around. I can sleep soundly at night. He said with a sigh of relief. Korra just rolled her eyes at him and his dramatics. Herlock gained a cunning smile seeing this. Of course reading Lieutenant Bifrung's report of the rally was very insightful as well. Terlock said as he complimented the young lieutenant. Thank you, Councilman Terlock. Naruto said in a neutral tone once again. Republic City is much better off now that you've arrived. Terlock said. Enough with the faltering Terlock. What do you want from Korra? Tenzin said. Patience Tenzin, I'm getting to that. As you may have heard Terlock said. You want Korra to join your task force I take it. Naruto said, interrupting the man. Terlock's smile faltered somewhat, but returned to normal as he continued, indeed Lieutenant Bifrong, as intelligent as ever. I need someone who will help me attack Amon directly. Someone who is fearless in the face of danger. And that someone is you Avatar Korra. He said to the girl. Join your task force. She questioned and then turned to Naruto, you knew he would ask me. She asked the earthbender. Naruto nodded, in time. Having the Avatar join his task force would get him even more supporters and volunteers to join. He would then most likely ask me to join as well to give his task force a major morale boost due to my prowess at facing Amon on my own already, and it would also get him volunteers from the police department who are loyal to me and would wish to help me. Naruto stated bepitically. Herlock's smile turned into a thin line, showing that was what he was thinking. Korra turned to food and said, I can't. Both Terlock and Tenzin looked surprised, but Naruto expected this. I must admit I'm rather surprised. I thought you'd jump at the chance to help me lead the charge against Amon. Terlock said honestly. Me too. Tenzin muttered. I came to Republic City to finish my avatar training with Tenzin. Right now I just need to focus on that. Korra answered. Which is why this opportunity is perfect. You would get on the job experience while performing your avatar duties for the city. Terlock said in a somewhat desperate tone. Korra has given you your answer councilman Terlock. Please leave. Naruto said in a dismissing tone. Indeed, Terlock. Tenzin said agreeing with Naruto. Very well, but I'm not giving up on you just yet. You'll be hearing from me soon. You as well Lieutenant Bifong. It has been a pleasure Avatar Korra. Terlock said as he walked out the door. Bye bye ponytail man. Ikki said as she waved at Terlock. The next day. 
Koro was petting Naga as Naruto sat close by reading with Kurama on his lap. You sure you don't want to talk about it? Naruto asked. Koro sighed, no Naruto. What I told Terlock is the reason I don't want to join. Koro said. Naruto rolled his eyes, I don't even need to read the vibrations to tell that's a lie. Naruto argued. I don't want to talk about it Naruto. Please respect that. She asked pleadingly. Naruto sighed and shook his head, fine. But when you want to talk, I'm always here for you water princess. He said with his usual grin. Koro gave a small smile, thanks. Hello fellow teammate and other non-teammate. Said a voice in the distance. They turned to see Bolin with his arms behind his back and Pabu on his shoulder. Hey Bolin. Kora said as she rubbed Naga's belly. In a while Bolin. Naruto said. Missed you at practice this week. Bolin said. Yes yeah, sorry about that. Kora said. Aw, oh, it's alright. We're probably out of the tournament anyway. Unless some money miraculously drops from the sky by tomorrow. Bolin said in an annoyed tone. Such negativity Bolin. Thought you were the sunshine one between you and your brother. Naruto joked. This is true. Bolin said nodding. Anywhere reason I came by was to give you this, Tata. He said as he handed Korra rose and a wrapped up cupcake. Korra took them, wow, thanks. But what this for? She asked. Bolin got into a thinking position, ah, I can't remember now. Oh yeah, now I remember. You saved me from Amon. Oh that. It was no big deal. Korra said trying to wave off the magnitude of the event. No big deal. Are you serious? I was totally freaking out when he was coming at me with his creepy mask, all I will take away your bending forever. I mean that is scary stuff. I still can't sleep well. Bolin honestly said. Naruto seeing Korra's face decided to intervene, hey Bolin, I was the mastermind behind your breakout. Where are my gifts? Naruto asked with a pout. Bolin turned to Naruto and smiled, ah, my favorite non-teammate. I have a once in a lifetime gift for you. He said as he pulled out an autograph piece of paper with his signature on it, when we make it big that will be worth a fortune. He said handing it to Naruto. Let me see if I got this straight. Koro gets a cupcake and I get a piece of paper with your name on it. I would rather get a cupcake because I'm hungry. Naruto said with a frown, that cupcake looked good too. There was only one cupcake. Bolin said with a deadpan expression. Darn. Naruto muttered as Kurama licked his face to console him. Kurama you are the only one who understands me. Naruto said as he hugged his fox companion with fake tears. Delivery for Avatar Korra and Lieutenant Naruto Bifong. Said the voice of an elderly woman. They turned to see an old woman carrying a large basket of goodies. Herlock sends his compliments and urges you reconsider his offer. The old woman said with a bow. Tell him I haven't changed my mind. Korra said dismissingly. Same here. Naruto replied not even looking at her. The old woman nodded and left. Who's this Terlock guy? Is he bothering you? Ha, huh, cause I could have a word with him. Bolin said as he punched his palm in a threatening manner. Not the brightest idea Bolin. Naruto said. Why's that? And if this guy is bothering Kora Naruto, why aren't you stopping him? Bolin questioned the blonde. Eh, no, it's not like that. He's just some old guy who works with Tenzin on the council. Kora said. Now you see why I said not the brightest idea Bolin. Attack someone from the council and Mako's going to working even further in overtime to bail you out. Naruto joked. Oh, good, that's a good point. Bolin said as he paled a bit. Later that night. Avatar Korra. Said the voice of the old woman again. Naruto turned to face her in annoyance, and as did Korra. I have something for you and Lieutenant Bifong. She said. Korra got angry and jumped to the balcony she was sitting on. It doesn't matter how many gifts Terlock gives me and Naruto. She said as she stomped the earth and spun the messenger around and kicked her in the back, I'm not joining his task force, and Naruto doesn't want to either. She said in anger. It's not a gift. The woman said urgently, it's an invitation. She said as she held up a letter. The what? Korra questioned as she walked over and took the letter. Herlock is throwing a gala in your honor. All of Republic City's movers and shakers will be there. The councilman humbly requests both your and Lieutenant Bifong's attendance. She said. At the gala. Tenzin's family entered the gala in formal air nomad wear, and Korra wore formal water tribe wear. Naruto was wearing his police uniform, as that was what he was expected to wear during these kinds of events. As they entered the crowd clapped for Korra, and some even clapped for Naruto. I can't believe this is all for me. Korra said in awe. Careful water princess. Knowing Terlock, he's got something planned. Naruto said cautiously. Korra nodded to this. Wise word Naruto. Korra keep your guard up. Tenzin added. So glad you could make it Avatar Korra. Said the voice of Terlock as he walked towards the three, if you will excuse us, the city awaits for its hero. He said as he walked Korra away from Tenzin, but Naruto followed her, much to Terlock's annoyance. 
Or it is my pleasure to introduce Republic City's most famous industrialist to Roshi Sato. Terlock said. Nice to meet you. Cora said with a nod. Old man Hiroshi, it has been a while. Naruto said as he walked towards the man with a grin. Hiroshi looked shocked, Naruto my boy. Excellent to see you again. Hiroshi said as he gave Naruto a light hug. As he let the hug go Naruto patted him on the back. I see you're friends with our young avatar here. He turned to Korra, we're all expecting great things from you. He said. Right. Greatness. Korra said as she muttered the last part to herself. Hey Korra, Naruto. Said the voice of Mako. They turned to see Mako dressed up with a beautiful girl on his arm. This is my daughter Asami, but I believe Naruto doesn't need introductions. He said with a smile. Naruto. Asami said with surprise and walked up and gave the blonde a big hug. Something that did not settle well with Korra. Asami. Look at you. Did you do something different with your hair? He asked in a teasing way. Asami lightly swatted his arm, ha ha Naruto. So Asami, how did you meet our favorite stoic firebender here? He asked. Mako just shot him a glare for that remark. Asami crashed into him on her moped. Bolin said as he entered the conversation. What? Are you okay? Korra asked with concern. I'm fine. More than fine. Agreed to sponsor our team. We're back in the tournament. Mako said in happiness. Isn't that great? Bolin said. Yeah. Korra said with excitement. Wait, when did she hit him? Naruto asked. When I was leaving the power plant. Mako answered. Naruto palmed his face, when I got you that job Mako, I thought you would be working, not being hit by pretty girls. Naruto said in a teasing tone and Mako blushed in embarrassment. Then again it was Asami the klutz, so it is to be expected. Naruto nodding and understanding. Asami swatted his arm again as she finally let go from her hug. Much to Korra's relief. So how do you and Naruto know each other? Korra asked a little bit harshly. Just before Asami could answer, Terlock interrupted them. Ah, Chief Bifrong. I believe you and Avatar Korra have already met. Terlock said calling Naruto's mother over. She walked over and got in Korra's face, just because the city is throwing you this big party, don't think you're something special. You've done absolutely nothing to deserve this. Lin said aggressively. Naruto just groaned at his mother. Hiroshi, Asami. A pleasure. Lin said in a kinder tone as she turned to the two. Greetings Lin. If you must know Avatar Korra, both Lin and I had Asami and Naruto play together when they were younger. Hiroshi said with a smile. Yes, both of them seemed keen to get into trouble when they were children. Lin said with a faint smile, remembering the past. And as they grew up, we thought they would be a good fit together and arranged a date between them. Hiroshi continued. But we didn't want to since we were only friends. Asami said with a giggle. And they wouldn't stop asking. Naruto said with a light chuckle. So I finally gave in to get him or her off my back. Both Naruto and Asami said at the same time and laughed as they pointed at their respected parent. Yes and we learned that the hard why when both Asami and Naruto decided to get us back by pranking us. Hiroshi said laughing. Of course they were punished for it. Lin said with a scowl, not liking to be reminded of that prank. Well I was anyway. Asami had old man Hiroshi wrapped around her finger and got off easy. Naruto said. So you're just friends. Korra asked casually but was hoping on the inside. Yep. They both answered. Korra released a sigh of relief. Asami saw this and grinned mischievously. It seemed her blonde friend had a crush, oh the teasing she was going to do to him later on. Later on Terlock took Korra to answer some reporters. Avatar Korra. You witness Amon take away people's bending first hand, how serious of a threat does he pose to the innocent citizens of Republic City? Korra cleared her throat, I think he presents a real problem. Naruto saw Terlock look at a reporter and growled. The slimy bastard setting her up. Then why have you refused to join Terlock's task force? As the Avatar, shouldn't you be going after Amon? Well I. Why are you backing away from this fight? What? No, I've never backed away from anything in my life. Korra stated. You promised to serve the city, are you going back on that promise now? Do you think pro-bending is more important than fighting the revolution? How do you think Avataron would have handled this? Are you afraid of Amon? I'm not afraid of anybody. If the city needs me then I'll join Terlock's task force and help fight Amon. Korra said. There's your headline folks. Terlock said as he looped an arm around Korra's shoulder. The bastard played her. Naruto said harshly to Tenzin. Tenzin nodded and looked down in sadness. At Republic City Hall. Both Korra and Naruto were sitting in a boardroom waiting for Terlock to show up. Korra had a worried look on her face, and Naruto had a scowl. Thanks for coming with me Naruto. She whispered to him. Naruto's expression softened, no problem. Sorry I let that bastard set you up like that. He replied. Korra shook her head, not your fault, I got into the heat of the moment. 
Still I should have seen it coming. Naruto said in an apologetic tone. By fellow task force deputies. Terlock said as he entered the room, tonight we will execute a raid on an underground Kai blocker training camp located in the Dragon Flats district. According to my sources. You mean my sources? Naruto interrupted him with a smirk. Terlock had a scowl on his face for a second and continued, yes Lieutenant Bifrong's sources. There is a cellar underneath this bookstore. He said pointing that the map in the room, where equalists train Kai blocking in secret. They later quietly drove to the side of the building with a water pump on the truck that drove for waterbending. Both Kor and Naruto looked inside and saw Kai blocker training. Each waterbender held a large amount of water till Terlock gave the word, and they unleashed the torrent and froze most of the Kai blocker trainees near the bottom windows. Naruto and the other earthbenders smashed the wall jumping in and capturing some more with earthbending. Two got away while one threw two smoke bombs, but Kor caught it in water and froze it so the smoke couldn't escape. I'm going after those two. Korra said as she ran forward and Naruto stayed by her side. They both ran down the hallway and Korra was leading the way, and she tripped on a line of rope. Korra rolled on the ground, and a Kai blocker hiding in the ceiling jumped down on top of her, but she rolled away and kicked her foot upwards and a large rock, and knocked out the Kai blocker. Another one jumped behind her with a lasso, but two columns of earth crushed him from the sides, and then released as another earth column rose from the ground and smashed him into the ceiling, knocking him out. Really need to take it easy Korra. Naruto said in an authority tone. Kora nodded as he grabbed her hand and pulled her to his chest. The closeness of the two caused her to blush as they stared into each other's eyes. Terlock entered a second later and the two separated themselves. Good work you two. He said with a smile. There was a photo op. When they started to cart all the Kai blockers to jail. Later on in the press conference. Naruto and Kora were standing behind Terlock as he began the conference. Avatar Kora and Lieutenant Naruto Bifrong have bravely answered the call to action with the three of us leading the charge. Republic City has nothing to fear from Amon and the Equalists. Question for the Avatar. Amon remains at large, why have you failed to locate him? Naruto went to snatch the mech quickly, but Korra already took it. You want to know why? Because Amon is hiding in the shadows like a coward. Amon I challenge you to a duel. No task force. No Kai blockers. Just the two of us tonight at midnight at Avatar on Memorial Island. Let's cut to the chase and settle this, if you're man enough to face me. She said as she dropped the mick and walked away. Idiot. Naruto raged in his mind at Korra's actions. Near midnight at the docks. Korra was preparing a boat as Terlock and the other task force members helped out. Tenzin landed with his glider near them. Korra this is madness. Tenzin said to the girl. Don't try and stop me and don't follow me. Naruto already tried. She said in sadness, I have to face Amon alone. Tenzin rounded on Terlock, this is all you're doing. I tried to talk her out of it too and as did Lieutenant Bifong, but she's made up her mind. Terlock said. Where is Naruto anyway? Tenzin asked. Terlock sighed, he called her an idiot to trying to face Amon this early and stormed out of the building. Terlock said. Tori used her waterbending to propel her boat to the island. On Avatar on Memorial Island. Tori stood and waited for Amon to show, but he didn't. She jumped down and started to walk back to the docks when a rope grabbed her legs and pulled her into a dark corridor. She quickly freed herself as she spun around and let loose a fire ring and saw that she was surrounded by Kai blockers with a flash of light from the fire. She valiantly tried to fight them off, but they blocked her Kai and prevented her from bending. She woke up a few seconds later and found herself being held by two Kai blockers. Just then a pillar of earth shot up from under her and launched her into the air and felt an arm catch her as she hung from the ceiling. Well water princess it seems you need some rescuing. Said a voice in an asigoing tone. She turned to see Naruto in his metalbender uniform smiling at her. Naruto, she mumbled. Your Kai is blocked right. Well sit tight as I take care of these guys. He said as he tossed her into the air and stomped his foot on the ceiling and made a cage of stone and had her sit in it. Naruto grinned and jumped down in the center of the Kai blockers. Hey guys. You do remember me right? He asked in an innocent tone. They charged at him and dodged to the left and earth column and hit one right in the face. One down, 19 more to go. Naruto said grinning with his eyes closed as he dropped something in his hand. A second later there was a blinding light that caused the Kai blockers to stagger a bit. Naruto made a quick earth line and knocked three more out. Four down, sixteen to go. Naruto dragged his hand on the ground and made a large club of earth and hit a Kai bender in the ribs as he swung it. You could just hear the crunch when the hit connected. While still in his swing, Naruto punched the club and it shattered forward and pelted two more equalists. Seven down. Man you guys drop like bumbleflies. He said. 
Naruto felt two Kai blockers in throwing position and stomped his foot and raised his hands and made two large earth walls on his sides and stomped his other foot and punched the walls, sending them flying into the Kai blockers who were about to throw some rope at him and crush them into the wall. Now it's nine and I'm feeling alive. He shouted. The blonde was surrounded again and he grinned viciously. He jumped ten feet in the air, Bifrong dive bomb. He shouted as he hit the ground, causing a large ripple effect with the ground and sending most of the equalists into the air. He opened his eyes as they had gotten used to the dark and raised multiple rocks and shot them at his airborne targets and hit them in the head. 18, man you guys just plain suck at your job, don't you? He taunted. The last two charged at him and he flung them into the air with an earth column launch pad and sent two metal cables from the metal spool on his back and caught them in mid-air and started to swing. As he reached an appropriate level of rotation, he cut the cables and they flew into the walls with a crunch. Naruto slapped his hands together to get the dusk off. You can come out Amon, I know you're there. Naruto shouted. Hori gasped as she saw Amon come out with a lantern. Greetings as always Naruto. Amon looked up to you as well young avatar. I had gotten your invitation. He said. But a party always needs more than two people, right? Naruto asked grinning. There was a long silence before Amon spoke again. You seem to be as humorous as always Naruto. He said in a plain tone, but the avatar and myself will do battle, but not at this time. It will be after everyone has lost their bending, and then we will have our grand battle. But of course our fight will happen before that Naruto. Amon said to the blonde. Good to know. Now shoo and leave your weak ass Kai blockers since I know, you know reinforcements are coming. Naruto said. And I am truly saddened for them. Amon said as the lamp he held turned off and then a second later on as it was on the ground. Naruto felt him leave and looked up. He stomped his foot and Korra's cage opened and she dropped in his arms bridal style. Well that was a good workout, right? He asked with his usual smile. Naruto you you came for me? She asked in surprise. Of course water princess, why wouldn't I? He questioned her. Because because you were really upset that I did this so I thought you hated me. She choked out. Not really Korra. It's too much work to hate you. He teased. Korra just start to break down and cried in his arms. I was so terrified. I felt so helpless. She said in hiccups. Don't worry your ponytailed head. I will always protect you and that's a promise of a lifetime. Naruto said sincerely with a smile. You were right though, since that night at the rally, I've been scared. I've never felt like this before. I don't know what to do. She said to him in a sob. Admitting it is first and hardest thing to do. He said soothingly to her. Henzin joined them a second later. He and Naruto had a wordless conversation, and they continued to let Korra cry it out in Blonde's arms as the task force entered in and arrested the downed Kai blockers. End chapter. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.